What's up guys, Waggish American here today bringing you another model build. Today I'm going to be building the Trumpeter 1 144th scale YF23. Now this build is short and quick and it's something I, I usually wouldn't build as you probably noticed. I'm running a bit behind in the video so I needed something to pump out really quick as to act as a filler content while I finish up. I've got three projects basically in the same stage. They're all on primer, they've all been pre-shaded, they're just waiting for paint. So I'm trying to build up my backlog, so this kit's going to be a quick little stand-in. This kit's from 99. Uh, instructions are alright, not a big fan of this. This gives no information as far as painting. You're su it's supposed to be black, or some variation of black, but uh, there's another scheme. They include the decals for the other scheme, but they tell you nothing about it. The instructions are very simple. It's a simple kit. A uh, small 144 scale, not much to tell. They're pretty clear for what they are, but again, the, just the way the paints are colored and coated, it's, it's, very, it's not clear in the slightest. As far as molding, there's a little bit of flash. I've taken some parts off the sprue. There's a little bit of flash, and the panel lines are kind of large and a little bit soft, but they're there. They should make a pretty decent impression. Everything looks like it's relatively crisply molded, even if there is a little bit of flash. There's very few parts. The clear parts look alright. It's not wine, let me pick it up right now. But I really don't have much to say about the kit here. Oh, the decals. The decals are... I don't know, we'll see how they go. They look really thick and they're very glossy, so I'm not very, I'm not very hopeful on these decals. But I don't have another thing to use, so I'm going to have to make them work. And there's not much more I can say about the kit, so let's get to the build. I began the build by assembling the cockpit and ejection seat. Once the content was complete, I glued the forward wheel well into position. Before I began to paint the aircraft, I attached the exhaust sections into place within the fuselage. I painted the cockpit with Tamiya XF63 German Grey. Details were then painted with Vallejo Green, Vallejo Yellow, Flat Black, and Flat White. Once the content was completed, I glued the two fuselage halves together. The fit here was alright, though some putty was required to close the gap in the lower part of the nose. The stabilizers are supposed to be attached before sealing the fuselage, however the mold here was awful and refused to fit. I wanted to try to get a pre-shaded effect on this project. This ended up being a huge waste of time, but I sprayed panel lines and creases with Tamiya X1 Black. I painted the aircraft with a custom mixture of Tamiya NATO Black and Tamiya Black. I did this by eye, so unfortunately I cannot tell you the mixing ratio. I applied the decals in my usual fashion. I applied a small amount of microset to the area, placed the decal, and then coated the decal in microsol. I then leave the decals to dry. To make this project more interesting, and to avoid trying to fit weights into this nose, I decided to put this one on a base. 
To make the base, I cut out rectangular sections of an old model box. I glued those down. I then cut a small bit of foam board and sanded contours into the surface after removing the paper on top. Unfortunately, I did not have any wood stains, so I thinned a reddish-brown oil paint and applied it to the surface. Sadly, I later had to repaint with a sol more solid color, and this removed the wood grain appearance. Additionally, it made the drying time very long, and as re I'm recording this, it's still tacky. The first parts of painting the base was to pre-shade the join lines with Tamiya X1. Sadly, I did not record the rest of the base process, so if you're interested, I'll describe the process a little bit more at the end of the video. I hand painted all white parts with Vallejo flat white, thinned slightly with water. I attached all landing gear pieces and doors with super glue. The fit on these was very good, but the gear themselves felt kind of weak and wobbly. I think this is due to their thickness and nothing wrong with the engineering of the model. To attach the model to the base, I applied a small dot of super glue to each tire and held the model in its place. Once the model was securely attached, I used Micro Crystal Clear to affix the canopy. And with that, the build was complete. Alright guys, here it is. The model is complete and it's sitting on the base. Unfortunately, I did not get as much uh, footage of making the base as I would have liked. I don't know what happened. I don't know if my camera ran out of storage or if it just died. Um, but, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get the painting of the base, which was unfortunate, and I think I need to re-glue this because it's pretty wobbly. But I have to be careful handling it because I did not thin these, the oils I used on the base enough, so that's unfortunate. But to paint, it's just basic airbrushing, masking. I did a little bit of shading with darker and lighter shades of the, my base coat for the sand area. Overall, it's a pretty good kit. Uh, the kit itself, not too many major gap problems that are hard to fix. It has one of the nicer 144 skill cockpits I've ever seen. Uh, 144 skill is not usually, oftentimes it's just an empty shell, so it was nice to have something in there. Uh, I messed up on the paint scheme a little. I think when I, when I sprayed the silver for the afterburner area, for the exhaust areas, uh, I did not clean my airbrush enough, so it kind of looks like there's a little bit of flex all in the paint. You can't really see it on camera, but it's it's visible once you get kind of close to it. The only thing I did not really like about this kit, these stabilizers. This infuriates me to no end, and for this one reason I would say don't buy this kit, even though it's like a $3. Um, if you look at any picture ever taken of the YF-23, the, the decals on the stabilizers have to be on both sides these decals here, they are on all four sides of the stabilizer. This kit only includes two of them. 
So I don't know what they were thinking when they included two. They did half of what you need to make it accurate. They included four of these bottom ones, but they didn't include all four of the other three decals that go on the stabilizers. So that's the only part of this kit I'm not a fan of. Other than that, pretty quick kit. I should have some real builds out here pretty soon. I've developed a bit of a backlog. I've got two projects that are ready to be, or one product, project that's ready to be painted, one project that is nearing the end of decal stages. So that's this filler video. I'll see you guys next time.